Hey, y'all. Okay, um, to be totally honest, uh, you're going to have this on Friday because I recorded it on Wednesday night to get it on Thursday, and I didn't record. So, I taught, look, I taught the lesson. Oh, I'll show you here. I was like teaching this whole lesson, working these problems out, the whole first page, got to the second page, and realized I wasn't freaking recording. So I just couldn't stay up. It was already like 11.30. So anyways, I am, today is Thursday, and I'm recording this now to put up on Friday. So this is going to be your Friday assignment. You'll have the entire weekend to work on it if you don't want to work on Friday. Um, but we are starting a new like thing, a new unit. We have covered logarithms and what you need to know about logarithms. Sorry, I'm not comfortable. Let me get this chair. I'm going to prop my feet up. Bless. Okay, so um, we are starting radical equations. Now this is not about equations, but this is, we have to have this review information before we can get to the actual equations. <clears throat> so we are going to be dealing with all things radicals in this whole new unit. Now you're probably thinking we didn't have a unit test. We're not even going to do that. <clears throat> you had two quizzes on logs. We'll do some quizzes with the radical equations, and that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to give you these big, massive tests to take at home. Um, I feel like these quizzes are um, going to be something that's going to help you. I almost have that first quiz graded. I'll get that one in the grade book, and then the one that you took yesterday on Edge Elastic or on Wednesday should be pretty easy to grade, so hopefully I'll get that one in the grade book too. So. That takes care of logarithms, so you should be prepared for ACT by now and hopefully for pre-cal. You will hit that again in pre-cal, so um, you'll be able to act, ask an actual teacher questions in class next year when you guys do logarithms. Okay, so radical equations. This is also something that you will see on the ACT. That's going to be on there um, dealing with radicals and radical equations. So everything that we're going to be doing for the next couple of days should probably be just a review of what you've learned in your previous classes. Um, but if it's not, it will help you get ready to actually do the radical equations. So before we even touch a radical, we need to talk about our perfect squares. Let me put this on mute so that doesn't interrupt us. Okay, so my perfect squares would be 1 squared, which is 1, 2 squared, which is 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, and so on. On and on and on. Okay, then we would have our cubes. Remember, cubed is to the third power. So 1 to the third power is 1. 2 to the third power is 8. 3 to the third power is 27. Um, and then I don't have the other ones memorized, but I have my cheat sheet. So the next one is 64, 125, 216, 343, 512, 729, and on and on and on. Okay, those are your cubes, perfect cubes. Now, perfect force, that would be 1 to the 4th power, which is 1. 2 to the 4th power is 16. 3 to the 4th power is 81. 4 to the 4th power is 256. 5 to the 4th power is 625. 6 to the 4th power is 1,296. 2,401, and 4,096. And again, they will continue. I don't have those memorized at all, like none of them. If you're using this calculator or something similar to this calculator, it's under math, 
So you would go down here to math and then you would scroll to, wait, that's how you get the square root. Sorry, sorry. If you're just doing the perfect squares, you just type the number in like five. Use the caret key right here. That caret key is going to be your like up button to get that box and then you would just put the fourth power in there. Five to the fourth power is 625. Six to the fourth power is that. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about a radical. The number itself is the index. So that is the index. And if there's no index, then we know that n is going to be 2 or a square root. We don't put the 2 there for square root. If it's not a number there, it's understood to be 2 for the square root. The actual little house itself is called the radical. And the number inside the house is called the radicand. Okay, so those would be all the parts of that. Now, this is a real basic review of these. So, at least these first ones. The square root of 16 is 4 because it's the fourth number listed up here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 121 is 11. I don't have that one listed, but I do know that it's next. 289. Well, that's 17. Okay, these are just square roots. If you don't have those memorized, you put them in your calculator. For a fraction like this, you don't need a calculator. You just do the numerator by itself and the denominator by itself. So that would be 2 fifths. Now, the only difference with this lesson and everything else that you've ever learned is that now when you take the square root of a number, not only is it 4, it's plus or minus 4, plus or minus 11, plus or minus 17, and plus or minus 2 fifths. Because if I type in my calculator 17 times 17, yes, I do get 289. But if I type in negative 17 times negative 17, I also get positive 289. So for these, it is always going to be plus or minus now moving forward. Those are your square roots. You don't see an index number there, so ta-da. Now for this one, this is a cubed root. You see the index number 3. The cube root of 8 is 2, not plus or minus 2. It's positive. Your 2 is positive. The cubed root of 343, that is here on my list. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is the seventh number. So again, that's positive 7, not plus or minus, just 7. Then we have negative 125. If it is the index 3 and it is an odd um number as an index, it's okay for us to have a negative underneath the radical. That does not mean it's imaginary. It's still a real answer. It's just going to be negative 5. And you can look at it in a calculator because if I multiply negative 5 times itself three times, you are going to get negative 125. And that's just it. It's allowed to be negative because it's going to be multiplied an odd number of times. Same thing with this one. The cubed root of 1 is 1. The cubed root of 27 is 3. So that is going to be negative 1 third. Okay. Now for the fourth root. Okay. The fourth root of 1 is just 1. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is going to give us 4. But can it be negative 1? Okay, <laughs> helps if I enter that correctly. All right, so we've got negative 1 multiplied by itself four times. What do we get? Positive 1. So just like with our square root, our fourth root is going to be plus or minus. This 2,401, if you don't know those and you have this calculator, that's when you would do the math button. 
If you press that math button, you come down here to the fifth thing, you can touch any um, or you can put any index number you want there. I can put the four and then 2,401, type it there. That gives me seven. Now my calculator just tells me seven, so you have to make sure you add the plus or minus seven. Okay, this one is going to be eight, so plus or minus eight. And then this one is going to be plus or minus 81 is the third, and 16 is the second. So plus or minus three halves. Okay, hopefully that's all information that you do know how to do. So now let's talk about our table. If we have an even index with a positive number, we are going to get real roots, and there's going to be two. That's going to be our plus or minus. If it's odd and it's positive, you're going to have a real solution, and you're going to have one. It's going to be positive. If it's odd and negative, it's still real. It's okay for it to be negative. You're just going to get one answer, and it's going to be negative. If it's even and it's negative, that's when you get your imaginary. Okay, we have talked about imaginary numbers. We know how to do that. It's still going to be two. It's going to be plus or minus. It just would be your I. So like if you had the square root of negative 25. Okay. Square root of negative 25 is going to be imaginary because there's a negative underneath there. So that is going to equal plus or minus 5i. So still has our two answers, still got our plus or minus. It's just going to be a 5i and a negative 5i. Okay, so now, do you remember how to simplify radicals? That's what we're going to be doing right here. There are different ways to do this. Um, one of the most popular ways to teach this to students is to have them memorize their perfect squares and then use the factors that include a perfect square. So for this one, the factors would be 9 and 13. 9 is a perfect square, so that's why I chose that one. 9 times 13 gives me 117. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 13 stays in the house. So your answer is plus or minus 3 square roots of 13. That is the simplified expression for that. Now, with the next one, number 2, you've got a, the 4 on the outside. Basically, you're just going to bring that down after you simplify um, the square root of 320. Now, some of you are really good at your factors, and you can look at that. You know the factors in your head because that just comes to you easily. If you're like me, I struggle with that a little bit. I'm not very good at memorizing things. Um, so for me, I can't look at that 320 and pick out the perfect square. I would have to take my calculator and go 320 divided by... 100. Obviously, I know that one wouldn't work, but then I would have to go 320 divided by 25. 320 divided by 16. Well, that's not 16. See, so this is just taking me too long, okay? I just, it's just taking me too long. 16 did work with 20, but the problem is 20 also has a perfect square in it. 14, um, 4 goes into 20, so this is not a large enough perfect square. So there's another way to do this. The other way that you could do this is to prime factorize. So I do know that 10 times 32 gives me 320. Neither one of those are perfect squares, but that's okay because I'm prime factorizing. I'm going to take that 10 and break it down into 5 and 2, both prime numbers, so that one's done. 32, I'm going to use 8 and 4. Neither one of those are prime, so I'm going to continue to do 4 times 2. That 4 breaks down to 2 times 2, and that's 2 times 2. So I have all my prime numbers. I just bring everybody down. 5, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So you learn how to prime factorize in elementary school. So you would just be bringing this down. It's called, I think it's called a prime factor tree because it looks like a tree. Now, this index is a 2. We're looking for the square root. So that index tells you what size groups you're looking for. So we have three groups of 2. 
Now, each group is just represented by its number. So this would be a 2, a 2, and a 2 on the outside because those are perfect groups. Now, that's not 222. You multiply those together. So 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 8 on the outside. And then whatever's left over is what stays in the house. The only thing left over for this one is 5. So it stays inside the house. This is using prime factorizing. Now that I know that I just, how I just did that, I know that 64 must be a factor of this because 64, the square root of 64 is 8. So if I take that 320 and I divide by 64, that gives me 5. So if I wanted to do it with the perfect uh, square root that is a factor, I would have 64 times 5. I would take the square root of 64, which is what gives me 8, and the square root of 5 stays in the radical. Either way, you guys, you're going to get the same answer, whether you use your factors or whether you prime factorize. I don't care how you do it as long as you're getting the correct answer. Now, like I said, we still have to bring that 4 down, so that was a little drastic of a line. But that 4 is on the outside and 8 is on the outside, so we multiply those together. 4 times 8 gives us 32. So this is 32 square roots of 5 as a simplified answer. Okay? Now, same thing, but this one's just a cubed root. So if you look at this one, you can look at your cube roots. 48 is not too large, so I'm going to divide by 16, and that one does have a factor, so I'm just going to use those factors. So I'm going to be looking for the cubed root of 16 and the cubed root of 3. The cubed C, and that's why I shouldn't even do that because now I mess this up. 16 is not a perfect cube. That was dumb. So a perfect cube is 1, 8, 27, 64. So I'm guessing it has to be 8. So 48 divided by 8 is 6. So that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to break that into 8 and 6. Sorry, y'all. So 8 and 6 are the factors that I'm looking for. The cubed root of 8 is 2 and a cubed root of six stays in the house. Now, just like the one from last time, I need to take that two that's on the outside and bring it down. Two times two gives me four cubed root of six. <clears throat> Over here, 108. So the factors of 108. Let me do this with prime factorizing. Obviously, I, like I said, am not strong when it comes to um, knowing my factors, so I'm just going to divide this one by um, 18. So 18 times 6, but I could have done 2, okay? I just knew that 18 went into this one, but 18 and 6 are not perfect cubes, so this doesn't help me cube-wise, but it does help me prime factorize. The factors of 18 are 9 times 2. The factors of 6 are 2 times 3. Everybody's prime except for 9. The factors of 9 are 3 times 3. Now I've got my prime factors. So this would be all of my prime factors to represent 108. I'm looking for an index number of 3, which means I have to have a perfect group of 3. I have 3 3's and 2 2's, which means I have one perfect group, that gets to go on the outside. The three gets to go on the outside. Those two twos have to go back inside the radical. Now, I'm not going to write it as 22. I'm going to multiply two times two, which gives me four. So I've simplified that. Now I just have to take the three that was out there originally and bring it back. Three times three is nine cube roots of four. And there's that. Again, this is stuff you probably know how to do. 
So if you're skipping through this part of the lesson, that's totally fine. Or if you're just going straight to your homework, like I get it, you know how to do this. I'm just going over this for the rest of us that aren't really sure. Okay, so we've got, again, the cubed root of this one. That's at negative 250. To speed things up, you guys, I'm going to just show you the key because I know I'm going to lose some of you if I don't. So if we look here, you can see that she is just using her perfect square. She's not prime factorizing. She just knows that negative 125 is perfect cube. That gives her negative 5. The 2 is left over. For this one, negative 2, she splits into negative 1 times 2. That allows her to get that negative out of the radical. So now she has negative 6 on the outside and positive 2 on the inside. We want to get that negative out, so that's why she did that. Over here, this is our fourth root. She's doing it the same way. She takes out 81 and 2. 81 is a perfect fourth root. It gives us 3. She's got 3 times 3, which gives her 9. Over here on this one, you can see that she broke it down using her perfect fourth root. That is going to be 6. So that 6 is there. The 5 is from the beginning. It's got still here in front. 5 times 6 is what gives her 30. 2 has to stay in the house. So this is using the factors. But again, you can prime factorize any of those if that's easier for you. Okay? All right, then we have our square root, cube root, fourth root. If you're doing this with an exponent, what you guys are doing is you're looking for the perfect groups of two in your exponents or three or four, depending on what your index says. If we look at the first one, that 32 is going to have to be broken down just like normal. So you take that 32 you're looking for the factor that's going to be a perfect square within that. What's well, going to be 16, 16 times 2. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 2, you have to keep it in the radical. So we've got 4 on the outside, 2 on the inside. Now, I gapped it out and laid my, left myself some space because what I'm going to do is then put my x's and y's. Now, there are four x's, so x, 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 x. I don't expect you to do this every single time. I'm just doing this to show you what's going on. We have a group of two and a group of two. That's two perfect groups, so we're going to put x squared on the outside because two perfect groups get to come out. Now we have nine y's, okay? So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Again, like I said, I don't expect you to do this every single time. I'm just doing this to show you what's going on. One perfect group, two perfect group, three, four. So I've got four perfect groups of y. So y to the fourth on the outside. The single y that's left over is going back in the house with two. So this is your answer. Okay, now same thing with all of these. It just is going to depend on your index. Let's look down at number 15. If we look at number 15, there's no number here, so we just have to look at our W. W to the fourth. Well, that goes into it one time, one perfect group, so a single W comes out. You could put W to the first if you want, but you don't have to. Then we have V to the 17th. So, 4 will go into 17 evenly four times. So there's going to be four perfect groups. That is going to be 16, right? Because 4 times 4 is 16. That would be 16 W's, or 16 V's accounted for, which means there's going to be one V left over. Again, if you can't do that in your head, all I'm doing is taking 17 and dividing it by 4. And you could even do long division. 4 goes into 17 4 times. 4 times uh, 4 is 16. Subtract. That's your one that's left over in the house. The four perfect groups are what gets to come out. So it's really doing that long division so that you can get your answer. Okay? The numbers up front work the same way. 
the only thing that you're doing right here is just taking those out. So again, I'm going to just show you the key so that you can look at this quickly. This is nine I just did with you. Okay, this is 10 and you can see what she's doing is awesome. She is accounting for everyone. So she's got under this radical everything that's perfect. 324 is perfect. A to the second is perfect and B to the sixth is also perfect. And then our leftovers are over here. There were three A's, two here, one there. There were seven B's, six here, one there. All of these are perfect, so she takes the square root of those. A squared is just A. B to the sixth squared is just B to the third, and then those are her leftovers. So she, I like the way that she did that. Okay, then we have this one. These, this is perfect, so there's nothing left over. Over here, she's taken out her perfect, has the other ones. This is great. All right, so I'm going to show you the final part of this key. This one down here is kind of funny because it's a binomial, but still four goes into eight twice. And so this is what would be left over. And then she went, took that one step further and she said, okay, well, if it's there twice, then I'm going to physically write it twice. And once I have it written it twice, then I can do FOIL. Doing FOIL is what gives you this quadratic. Okay, we'll screenshot this if you need it or go back and forth. Let me know if you have any questions. I do think most of this will probably be a review to you. But if it's not and you have questions, please let me know. You do have all weekend to get this done and get your work tur turned in Monday by 8 a.m., you guys. So don't wait till Monday morning to do this. I know you are not waking up before 8 o'clock to work on math homework. So get this done at some point. And like I said, this radical equations is the last thing that we have to learn. Even if we were in class, this would be our last unit that we would have to cover so we have done great. We're going to finish before the end of the school year. And I am so proud of all of you that are working so hard. Um, Y'all are awesome. So, okay. Have a great rest of the day. Have a great weekend. I love you.